All right, we're uh, we're introducing the uh, first beta uh, for widespread use for color change for Profi OS. Um, so, first off, I gotta thank uh, Matt McGreary. He uh, SA22C. He did a ton to make this all happen. Uh, and uh, this is obviously running in his fork, but uh, he and I worked uh, did a lot together on this, and he had a lot of great ideas. I actually made a ton of improvements, which I'll kind of show you guys to make this all possible. Um, so. Uh, there's actually going to be way too much information for a video or even for a Facebook post, so I have a thread on TRA. Uh, there'll be a link. Uh, please go read that. We put together a, a bunch of instructions and explanation on everything, um, as well as all the links to download uh, the actual uh, fork. Um, plus, uh, it, within the fork, there's going to be templates for easy use, um, so that's a real quick, simple implementation of color change. Um, and then I have a style library which will ever be growing. Um, I kind of had to actually cut myself off. Uh, I had so many ideas but just uh, wasn't enough time to get them all done so there will be con continuous updates there. Um, but uh, for the style library you can go there. You can grab the styles, uh, copy and paste them, drop them into your uh, config and, and go off and running. Um, they will also be a roadmap if you want to start looking at how to do uh, some of these effects. Um, feel free to you know take the style and play with it um, you know see how it works um, and we do have uh, there's gonna be some videos instructions uh, explanations lots of stuff on that TRA thread so let me get started so color change for profi um, is actually kind of almost a misnomer in my point of view um, it's not really just color change essentially uh, the way this is, is it's, it's really just an effect. Um, so as you go to build your styles, you'll see that it's an effect you drop in, um, but it's extremely flexible. It can do colors, it can do effects, it can do multiple colors of multiple things, it can do multiple effects. Um, so it, it's really not just about having a, a, a list of colors that you cycle through. It, it's, it's so much more. And there's a lot of uses beyond just changing the color of your blade, which uh, I'll try to show here. but there's so many possibilities that uh, I really want everybody to go have fun with it. Uh, think up what you'd like to do and try it out. So without further ado, let me kind of show some stuff. So uh, we're calling this color and effect change. Um, there's actually two methods. Um, so there's what we're calling on the fly. Um, and with this fork, there's actually several button configurations as well as a bunch of customization. So I'm using uh, my own button config. Essentially it's the base OS uh, with the controls for color change in it. Uh, that is available but it's not by default. By default this fork will have uh, SA22C's button config for both two button and one button. Um, if you want to do the same controls I have there's instructions in that TRA thread on how to use uh, the, the saber.h file that I'm showing. So my controls might look different than yours um, but everything works exactly the same. It's just how you get to it. So on the fly color change, essentially you either click a button combination or uh, Matt actually put together a great swing to change capability, which is also you can select that and customize it. Um, but either way, the on the fly just changes the color when you do the button action or the swing to change. All right. Now, um, in addition to that, uh, in addition to color change, I also so much to cover. Um, Matt spent a lot of time. He took uh, my dual uh, lockup mod, uh, which allowed for localized lockup and force lightning lockup, and he rolled that into the fork. And then he did it even better. He actually went and wrote new styles that actually reduced the amount of code. So those of you who have seen my localized lockup or force lightning lockup code, those styles were really long. It's now a fraction of that, and that's all thanks to his hard work and effort. Um, so now all of the styles in my style library plus the templates, they're going to have localized lockup and they're going to have force lightning lockup built in and the code is a fraction of what it used to be. So just kind of show that. So this is the localized lockup and now within the same blade, I've also got force lightning lockup. And that's all his efforts, um, just making that code a lot easier to, to implement. Um, so that's the on-the-fly color change. That's just this is just a simple example. So as I said, color change is a little bit of a misnomer. It's not just color change. You can actually use the on-the-fly uh, change to do effects. So this is uh, this is technically the one that got me started on trying to do this. Um, this is my pull to the darkness. Um, so. 
uh, this is now on demand. So what that means is I can actually at any time do the corruption from Ben Solo to Kylo Ren. So the old way was just kind of a one-off. This new using uh, color change, but this is using color change fade, which is a new style. So it has that fade effect. It has a long transition time built in on this one. Um, and it will just keep going back and forth between a blue audio flicker and the unstable red. Now you're not limited to that. You could do multiples. You could have, you know, 8, 9, 12, 20 different effect and styles and colors all together and still run through them. Uh, but for Pull to the Darkness, it essentially goes from the light side blue to an unstable red every time I do it. And now I can just keep going back and forth between Corruption and Redemption. Uh, and then again, this will have Localized Lockup and Force Lightning Lockup. So that, those two first styles, those are what we're calling the on-the-fly method. Um, there is a second color and effect change method um, available too, and that's uh, what we call scroll and select. So this is my unstable style, um, but this one's using color scroll. So what color scroll does is it first it lets you do the on-the-fly. So I can do my on-the-fly color changes. But then there's also now a scroll mode. Um, and scroll mode for me is activated with aux and twist. And in scroll mode, it's going to cycle through the colors. And it's just going to continuously cycle. There is a display time that you set. So this one I think is probably 2,000 milliseconds, but you can make it longer or shorter, however you like. But this will now just keep cycling. And I can leave it cycling. There's no reason that I have to stop it. But if you get to a color you like, you just go in and select it. And that'll lock it in. So now that color stays. And I can go in and out of uh, scroll mode as many times as I want. And then again, these styles are now built in with the localized lockup and the force lightning lockup. So, but now, whenever you want, you can just have, uh, you know, your colors scrolling. You can also do effects, um, but this will just keep scrolling until I get out of this menu. Um, and uh, the other nice thing you can do with this, with scroll mode, is if you set a really long display time, you can use this as a demo. Um, so you can just have a demo mode if you're like at a show or have this sitting on your shelf, you know, at the house and have some people over. You want to show them everything your your saber can do. Just run scroll mode, and it'll just keep going. And so because we actually have the two methods for changing color and effects, um, you can also combine them. So what that means is I can use a color change, and then there's a new style called effect scroll. And what that does is I can set a group of colors or effects to run on color change. Those will be changed on the fly. And then I can set up a second group of colors or a second group of effects to run on scroll mode. And they'll work independently of each other. So this is just a regular audio flicker and then I've got the on-the-fly color change but then I also can use scroll mode and this way I have the effects set up so that's an unstable that's a hump flicker that's gonna be a pulse I've got brown noise random per LED that's a fire and then I did a faster fire and then a rain blade, and then a rainbow. Uh, now rainbow isn't affected by color. Um, so you can have scroll mode doing your effect changes, but because the controls are separate, I can have scroll mode running, and I can also do color change at the same time. So this one is what I'm calling full spectrum. It's got 12 colors and 10 effects. So essentially you end up with, I think it's 111 blades because rainbow is untouched. So yeah, within one preset, with just this style, I get 111 combinations. So I can just keep going around. Rainbow won't get changed by color change. But now I'm back to my red, and then I can, 
I can get out of the scroll mode and that will lock in. This is a hump flicker in red. Um, so now I can do color change and I can do effect change separately from each other. Um, and you can use kind of different combinations of the two. So that's uh, that. this style and all the styles I'm showing here, they are available on the style library if you just want to grab them and get started. Um, or you can, you know, go and build your own. But um, this is now the ability to do color change with on the fly and color change with scroll select separately gives even more possibilities. And this is just a flame blade and this one has color scroll set up in it too. Um, so I just, I like this one so I wanted to show it. Oops, this one, I'm sorry, this is just color change. This one wasn't set up for scroll mode, that's my mistake. So, but this one, you could set it up either way. So when you're building your styles, and I do have a scrolling style as well. This one I must have loaded the, uh, the straight color change effect. Oh, okay. This is uh, this style I've shown already, but I wanted to show it, and it's available in the style library too. This is just a different use, uh, so similar to Pull to the Darkness. So this is the Koran Horn style. This is uh, meant to be a dual phase lightsaber. Um, so Koran Horn was in the Legends books. If you haven't read them, they're they're actually really good. But uh, in the in the books, he had a silver lightsaber. Um, but he had a second crystal in the chamber of his saber, so he would twist the hilt, it would realign the crystals, and then he would get a purple blade. Um, so this is using color change, but then there's a new, uh, what we're calling a transition, which is called chain spark. And I use chain spark here to represent those crystals realigning. So when I go to do color change, you'll see I'll go from this silver blade. For a second, you'll see kind of a hump flicker, unstable look, and then it'll lock into the purple. And uh, using that chain spark, that's on purpose. That's to make it look like the crystals in your saber are realigning. So there was that hump flicker, and now it's a purple blade. And that's just using color change with chain spark, um, and it just gives you even more. You can accent your changes. Um, and then I can go back to my silver blade. And again, it's going to have that hump flicker, and then it'll lock in. So that's just another thing. You can, you know, you don't have to have 12 colors and 20 effects in your preset. If you have a very specific thing you want to do, you can do it um, with this. It's it, every single preset can be completely different, can have as many or as few colors and effects as you want. So it's not, this isn't all encompassing. This is, you can get as specific as you want for every preset and just have all kinds of different blades and all effects built together. So there's so much more. Uh, I feel like I've been talking for a long time, and I'm sure you guys are tuning me out a little bit. So all I can say is, is go read the thread, uh, you know, download the fork, pull some of the styles, look at the templates, and you know, just have fun. And uh, this is a beta. If you've come across anything, please let Matt and I know. Um, we've done a lot of testing. We did have a beta group, so I want to thank those guys. Um, they, they, they were helpful, particularly in trying to figure out how to get this to the masses. Um, but uh, I'm just really excited for everybody to see it. I hope you all enjoy. Thanks for listening.